uh, but the LPL doesn't change too much. So first Ooh. pick Renekton here. While we didn't talk about this, Varus has been left yeah. open. And over to Wink. So the thing I like about this, right, and again, we didn't notice it in the moment, but the fact that Suning changed their ban from Renekton is what pushed IG to change their ban uh, from Varus to Thresh, because it's like, hey, uh, if they're going to get a strong champion, we are also going to get a strong champion in return. So that is, again, another small adaptation that was nice coming out from IG. You are going to, I think, theoretically want to go into the Gnar. We're going to go straight into the Volibear. This is a flex, right? This is a champion that we've seen in past seasons, 2020 especially, where you would typically see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Renekton. and you can go to press the attack and kind of uh, try to find those aggressive trades in the early laning phase. But at the same time, he's been a champion that might not be an S tier pick in the jungle in this meta, but has kind of been viewed in like that tier two when, once things like the Rumble and Udir are taken away, Volley Bear starts coming in like we saw at MSI. Especially with that cap that came in through, right? The the damage cap on Sky Splitter where through AoE camps, he just does so well. Plus the shield that he gets as well on the level one of Sky Splitter. Uh, I want to note that bottom line has changed up exponentially. You mentioned that the Thresh band was uh, was making you a bit inquisitive as to what Huan Fung would do. Well, we get his Kaiser. We get the on Nautilus as well. So a pretty strong 2v2 that is going to rely on that Halo Blades with Nort follow-up. You know, one thing I'm sad we don't see more of that we saw at MSI is Braum. Right. Because one thing you can already see from Suning's comp, right? Very short range, very dive heavy, very all-in focused. I think is IG to where you already have this far as sure you have a volley bear, but it's like, hey, you can try to start pivoting your comp to like, okay, we're going to keep them at, at arm's length. They're going to all into us. We're going to have a lot of zone control. We're going to have a lot of uh, like kiting tools. And yeah, I, I think that would have been a nice pivot for IG's comp. We do know Leona's still extremely strong in the laning phase against Nautilus just for the fact that he hooks you. You're tankier than him. You also have more base damages than him. It is totally fine. But yeah, I'd like to see IG keep playing the range game and maybe get some more zoning tools in there as well. Rookie to Phenomenal Zoe game one. I expect them to leave counter pick for Rookie in this game, but something along those lines, right? You know all of Suning's members will be running at you. Looking for some of those zoning tools. Got it. I'll, I'll wait for Rookie's pick. And you mentioned the counter pick there, as we'd expect. We still need to find out where this Volley Bear's going. For now, I'll just lock and key it away in the jungle as we've seen most, but the Diana Band against SOFM, something that we've seen really just plague solo queue in a, in a pretty decent position alongside the Nidalee. So really targeting down SOFM's champion pool, four out of the five bands are right against him. And now, you know, once we get past the Udir, I actually don't know what's left. You already mentioned the Nidalee, something that could come out. They have the Renekton in the top side. We did see Nidalee a little bit in LCS. We've been hitting on Xin Zhao all night thus far, all day, you know, depending on where you are. So yeah. there are definitely still some champions available. But this is also what we talked about, right? That, you know, there were some changes in the jungle. Once you do start getting a lot of these bands coming out, it does bring us into the the depths of all the options that you can kind of try and find. It does feel like, while while this is a bit, bit deeper, this does look like a composition we saw many times in spring. We get Angel's Azir that we know he loves to play. And now we just need a jungler, right? Viego has been looked over much like Gwen until they started banning her, but he's still up and available. SOFM, will he be the first to bring it up? He's teasing us, but we finally get it. Viego Mortensen. I loved him as Aragorn. I hope I love him with SOFM. Yeah, really interesting because it's been a pick we've been seeing a little bit more of in solo lanes in the regions we have seen play again, major and minor. But instead, we're going to expect to see SOFM break this into the jungle. Nothing else on Suning's composition will go jungle. So for Suning... I think it's a bit strange, like like their composition overall, to where again you have four very like all in heavy champions with an Azir in the back line. For the side of IG, I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of how they got to the conclusion that they did where you know what Suning are gonna keep indexing in towards. And what they've done is like, okay, we're gonna go for a really brawly, really fight heavy composition. They have a bunch of strong laners. We know Varus pretty much the strongest laning AD carry in the meta. Oh, yeah. Lucian, same for mid lane. Volley Bear can go toe to toe with that Renekton. So can IG find the early lead? You know, <laughs> that's a that's a question we we'll see later on. But then the question is, can they hold that early lead? I feel like- Suning continuing to showcase 
as a series to watch. Let's jump onto Summer Drift and see where we go from here. Lyrics already told you that IG need to pull momentum in this game. We have Lucian, we have Varus. We know what this comp can do with early access to gold, especially on Wink's side when he's gone the Halo Blades Varus, which can get those Blight procs really fast and then just queue down for a quick half HP trade. That's the thing, right? <laughs> You need to be hoping that Wink and Lucas can put up a strong performance in lane. So hopefully that's something we can see that we haven't seen in previous games. We're going to see uh, junglers uh, go towards opposing sides of the map. I think it's a bit expected. You just highlighted the strength of IG's bot lane. So guaranteed scuttle for Shun. At the same time for uh, SOFM, he has been who should be able to look for some aggressive and volatile trades in topside. Maybe impact that lane. But... For me, SOFM might have opportunities around top, might be able to find something in bot, but I think it's a lot more about mid-game skirmishes as we highlighted. I think it's a lot more about getting to level six and then looking for those brawls with those resets and trying to find those all-ins and those dives onto the back line, onto Wink and take him out to win. As we know, it can be so abusive as, as this top lane brawl actually builds up Nani onto Bin. One more auto. Can he get the lightning? Ooh. He can. Takes him down, and there you go. The Shy's replacement does it again. Yeah, nice from him. He took the grasp against the Conqueror on Bin. Again, uh, Conqueror a lot less of like an early game trade room uh, than compared to PTA. Had the sustain, had the damage to do oh, it. Hello? Wink. SOFM going to flash over the wall. The Blade of the Rune King coming through clutch here. SOFM stunned up, though, but he gets the first kill, while Lucas now has to retreat. Not a good start against the Viego. Is SOFM going to be happy with that one? And I was, I'm was i assuming Wink was going to put a ward and just got caught out by SOFM. Nice find by SOFM to uh, get that, that kill. And right, we're one-to-one -one right now. IG are the team that now transitioning into getting some vision down on bot side because they know that SOFM and SUNY have to be backing off from the play. I think this should be a pretty good double scuttle angle for Shun, but... I assume he'll probably just go towards his bot side camps, maybe, because I, that could make your clear a little bit awkward. But hey, with Folly Bear having push in top side and Lucian pressuring in mid, it looks like he just wants to go for it. He is going to end up meeting SOFM, it looks like, though. He is. Let's see what happens in the 1v1. Remember, Sovereign's domination is there if it builds up to more than just the one. Gonna go invisible there with the harrowed path as he now walks he away. SOFM camps. getting flashed on Shun wants to take him on. The spectral more doesn't connect as well, so SOFM doesn't have that gap closed. He gets a smite down, but Shun's backing away from Bin. He's got his number though. Angels joined as well, and now it all turns back around. SOFM had bros. Yeah, exactly right. We saw that uh Nani does have lane prio, and Rookie actually did have prio when the initial Scuttlecrab fight started off, if I'm not correct. But uh, I think Angel got the bounce back, was able to force that in extremely fast. Probably just prioritized using his skills on the wave. Nani went up to tower, so been able to come. Doesn't really matter if he loses a few CS, though. He's lost a lot more than a few thus far, but... I think it was good that Bin did hover over. We saw that SOFM didn't go down, and Shun actually the one going to be taken down, but is at least up in terms of farm thus far. He was able to get both Scuttle Crabs in the end. He, he did get both, and him going down will mean that, okay, Bin's in a more comfortable position, but you're right. The CS lead does mean something here as Shun goes back to his own jungle. Uh, has a bit of a, a, an EXP lead too. Note that SOFM went back. He has gone towards... Uh, the Iron Spike Whip, so he's going to be CCing a little bit faster. Sorry, clearing a little bit faster as Rookie on Angel threatening him back against the turret. And Lyric, you're a mid lane god, you know, and that's being modest. Lucian versus Azir. What happens in the matchup? Walk me through, because Lucian's always kind of that lane dominant champion. I think uh, we're going to have to pause on mid lane. Ah, oh, but the, the mid lane is just... It's just your domain. Shun's going to back away after hitting the ward, and maybe now you can tell me. I feel like this matchup is actually a lot less like interactive than, than you're kind of making it seem right, because Azir will always be in a fine position where he can be able to farm safely to keep up. Rookie hits six first, so... Point. Yeah, going to do a nice job of... Again, he has uh, an EXP lead because we did see Angel move over in a previous play, and he's going to take full uh, advantage of that going in. Also, Lucas being here... Looks like IG just going to transition towards the top side of the map. No Herald up for two minutes, so 
We're not going to see anything like that. But yeah, Rookie just doing a nice job, right? Lucian, you have low cooldown abilities, very easy to trade, very easy to force in the wave. And Angel just having to respect. I like that. Thank you for outlining that for me, especially when we're looking towards the top side and Rookie might get involved in the play. I also want to note for Bin while we're watching this little... Uh, this zoning potential of IG Ooh. that an Udyr and a Volibear dive so damn well. As a Harrowed Path used by SOFM, there's the Sky Splitter. SOFM walking past, there's a massive wave here, but Shun and Lucas piling on top. There's the ultimate, the Stormbringer stops the turret and Bin drops to the Udyr, while the Zenith Blade connects onto SOFM and Viego Mortensen goes down for the double kill straight on top of Shun. Nani is doing such good work. And I mean, that was just a play by the whole side of IG, right? Because that is a trade, as we now see on our screen. Because you're doing that, your support's not bought. There's too much threat uh, on Wink under the bottom turret. So he's going to move to mid, catch this wave, so he's not falling behind in EXP himself. But overall, I really like that they uh, were zoning Bin off from the CS to start that off, right? Because he's falling so far behind, not only in terms of gold, but EXP, as you see his level. They're pretty much doomed here. They go in with the ultimate from Volibear. Even Rookie he is here to follow up. I also like that they waited yep. out the Viego E to initially start that one up. And overall, I think it was just, you know, nicely executed by the side of Invictus Gaming. But in return, at least Tuan Fong was able to get a bit of a, an advantage for himself. Yeah, that 10 CS lead, the turret plating we saw on the bottom of our screen, it was only one bit of turret plating, and we know that Wink and Lucas in this lane shouldn't have much of a trouble holding them off in future, but at least Sooning are getting something while they're falling down in gold in the rest of the map. Lyric, I want to point your attention towards the CS lead. That is brewing because of the top side, and how Nani is two levels ahead right now with a massive minion wave stacking against him. I mean, things are just going so well for the fill in the new top laner, whatever you want to call him, of Invictus Gaming. Yeah, he's, again, he, IG have been putting a ton of resources into him. It did start off with his solo kill, so let's definitely True. not discredit him. He also did already uh, rush Bramble Vest, which has received a slight nerf. Uh, the, the damage it reflects doesn't scale off like bon with bonus sense, armor yeah. anymore. Ooh, bit of a trade, but nothing's going to happen. He's already close to on his way to his mythic item as well, so... For now, he's just going to be straight up chilling. And now the question is, are IG going to keep looking to punish that, which is what I assume they'll do with, again, the fact their bot lane's so, falling so far behind, or do they want to try to salvage that situation, which might just end up with them losing 3v3s or 4v4s in the bottom lane? At the very least, for Sooning, they want to make a proactive play in the bottom lane instead. You can see Viego over the wall. He has the Heartbreaker at the ready there to possess someone. The Harrowed Path there, the Spectral Maw. He misses. He goes between the goalposts. But now, at the very least, he has Leona. SOFM turns, misses the Zenith Blade, while Wink is trying to get someone who's tanking the turret, but it's too late. SOFM with a second kill, while IG commit towards topside even more. I mean, at least they were able to find one, right? Because Sunni were the team that dedicated resources into the bottom lane, so they were able to get a trade. But once SOFM's there, it's just too easy, especially you get that first soul, right? You get the reset on your ultimate, and you're able to follow that up and just continuously go in. You have the damage available, but IG at least going to try to uh, escalate the gold lead on the opposite side of the map. But a nice Whoa. dragon as ooh. Good play the from slide Angel. slide and glide, as Dagger yep, would that put it, was uh, very close. And that's something you, you see out of Azir's, right? Is that once you hit that level six mark, there is kill pressure if you do have, you know, another ally there, what typically your jungler, I guess in this case, your support. Go in for the swoop and boop, have the engage, you then have there the damage, is. but Rookie was, uh, <laughs> Rookie was ready for it. He was. Uh, I gotta apologize, the swoop and boop, you corrected me. Uh, that's, that's what Dacta would say. Uh, the slide and glide Shame feels like Shame on you. Look, it feels, it feels like a mop commercial, so. Uh, I gotta fix that one up. So a good dodge, but burns the flash to do it, which means Rookie is a little bit more vulnerable. As he pushes in this wave, just note what's going on the rest of the map. Shun focusing on this top side, who's gonna get the next scuttle crab, and is so far ahead. Like the the running bear man is 30 CS ahead of Viego right now, and SOFM down a level, down a bit of XP, of course uh, included. I think this is a great early game for the jungler that wants to start off the split strong. Now going for the dive onto Angel, the flash bear slap. Easy as that. Give the kill to Rookie. And out he walks. Yep, they just they just get that for free. And I like that you highlighted, again, his, the advantage he's found. We also need to remember that he's been able to farm uh, SOFM's topside jungle pretty much freely with how the solo lane yep. dynamic has gone. And that really also goes to show with IG's draft because we hit on this coming out of pick ban, right? Was that 
they intentionally just drafted a bunch of strong lanes that they can play around, and in this case, try to shut SOFM behind, try to take Bin out of the game. Oh no. SOFM. He's caught out. He's had to use the Heartbreaker to get the gap closed. The Unbreakable as he turns back around. Now he'll have the Udi. Good shutdown. Suiting were lying for him in a way. There is a bear slap at the ready as Lucas goes on in. But the Stormbringer flank! Nani came out of nowhere. SOFM about to drop down as well. The bear literally found his honey. As Huan Fong now getting annihilated by Wink. One more auto to do it. Goes golden in the nick of time. Angel wants the kill. He'll find it with the Emperor's Divide. But now has to run all the way away from Rookie. There's no flash, but the Relentless Pursuit almost up and available. And Invictus Gaming's top laner is surely set up for success this game. And it's nice to see because this is one of the questions I had uh, going into this state of the game, right? Is that you got a ton of resources in early game. Now it's like, how do you lose the fact that you've taken down a turret and, and have, have a long lane? Because this is where it's like, okay, you know Bin's not really going to look for aggressive trades with you. So you're going to push in, look to get deep vision. Uh, okay, Angel what's happening is here? fine. He's going to teleport thanks to a soldier onto on. Rookie has teleported all the way down. Okay, ambitious play. That fizzles out, and there's no dragon here, so the teleport feels like a win for Suni. Yeah, it does feel like a bit of a waste for IG. Again, just overforcing. Maybe it could have worked if Shun didn't show Surly, but I still doubt it. You see the TP animation coming in. Just overall, a little bit too forced. But going back to the last conversation, right? The one big point of pressure IG have on the map is top lane. And it's going to keep happening as we see now on the mini-map that Nani's going to be able to push out. How does he use his pressure? Is he going to consistently look for vision in the enemy jungle? Is he going to hover around mid, look for Gangsmit, or even just use Fog of War to try to zone Angel out? Like, there's a lot of different options that Nani has. And the question is, like, how do IG use that to accelerate the other lanes? Yeah, because he, so far he's been grouping up and essentially just coming in for some of these backboard plays that we saw before. Um... And, and we know what Volley Bear versus Renekton's like, right? Like, every time Renekton goes in for the trade, he has to get out before Sky Splitter comes in, before that burst of W comes through as well. Uh, especially with Divine Sunderer, a great item on Volley Bear. And we know that, we're talking about it in last game, Lyric, it just got buffed for melee users. The heal is exceptional. And see, it rival even uh, uh, Cole the Meek or whatever the Renekton Q is cool. I mean, it just got buffed overall. It's just a buffed item. It's just strong. Again, we see it on Ezreal. We're, we're seeing it on everyone right now. If you can justify building Divine Sunder, you do it. Heck, uh, we yep. see we see people do it even on Viego as, you know, potentially. Uh, doesn't look like SOFM's going to do it, but I've been watching Canyon solo queue games. He's been building it where typically we do see Sunder. the Immortal Shield Bow or Kraken Slayer come out. Yeah. Well, actually, well, we he's going to go for it. Instead. Yeah, so a lot of people wondering what was going to... Because in solo queue, when they see Viego, Actually, you know, you no, expect the not. Noon Quiver into something else. Lyric, what you're looking at items, obviously. T take me through it. Yeah, again, I'm looking at SOFM's build on Viego because, again, typically what you'll see is either, uh, like we said, Immortal Shieldbow, Kraken Slayer, or, again, Canyon and some others have been doing Divine Sunder and solo queue lately. But he's going for Stride Breaker, it looks like, right? Yeah. Going I mean, straight it's... towards the Stride Breaker. SOFM... Look, we might not see this build again. We might. Who knows? SOFM is an innovator, and that's how we that's how we call him in the LPL. Uh, Dragon's coming up, though, Lyric. And, and while we can talk about SOFM in a second, watch how he builds for the rest of the game. Let's just focus on the fact that, okay, Dragon's going to go down here. For some reason, the time is in the top left before Dragon dies. Feels like it's five seconds too early, but doesn't matter. But we have an Infernal Rift. And it's one dragon apiece with IG mounting on a 3k gold lead. And again, bed top laner, bed jungle, rookie in a good position. Wink not too bad here in this game on his Varus. And Sooning playing from behind. But just talking about win conditions again, Lyric, you did mention you're talking about how we've got the Azir, we've got the Kaiser. For Sooning, it's not all doom and gloom if we do go, you know, later into this game, right? I mean, if we do get to a point, especially when the Azir is relevant, right? You have the you have the Emperor's Divide force members back. You can try to play from a range where it's like, okay, there is a Varus on the opposite side, but he should be under threat from the potential flanks that Suning would want to be looking for. The problem is, I, I feel like IG are positioned pretty well to just burst out any member of Suning. They, they do have quite a bit of burst, even like Bin or On in the front line. They can use those initial cooldowns to take them down, have numbers advantage. So I still feel like we're looking quite a ways before... It's like, okay, 5v5, soon you're going to come in sh swinging. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, I just been popping over the wall and saying, oh, there's Lucas and Rookie. Uh, it, it was a little bit sus to that. IG going to power off the play. Uh, sorry, further to your point, uh, I appreciate the explanation, I think, because... You know, a lot of people will see the scaling and look at it one dimensionally, but it's how they get access, right? Or rather, how IG might get access to some of those core carries. Right now with the gold lead, it looks too big. A Stormbringer comes down on, just went off. There comes IG with the first kill. Now on to SOFM. He has to flush away after using the Heartbreaker. All the way back to his turret. That was a quick inhibitor, or at least close to. 16 minutes in, inhibitor close to going down. No one touching the minion wave, but for now, IG will just back away. And I'm surprised that IG didn't just fully commit with the fact that they still saw Kaisa on their turret. But overall, oh. they were able to get a bit. Oh, oh looks like Angel. Hey, no, Angel's going to let this play. one go down. Yeah, so so what you're doing, right, is now you have like a guaranteed uh, wave of minions constantly coming into you. So you pretty much have like a guaranteed gold source. And there's like times, I think, especially when your comp like hard outscales the other comp, you have like mechanisms of like wave clear and, and abilities to turtle where it, it definitely makes sense. But yeah. I think that was Angel's thought process going into that one. But IG drop Herald, we saw suiting over index into the opposite side of the map. SOFM actually had just gotten here right before the replay showed because he was hovering around Huan Fong on the opposite side. Suning do have the potential of diving in onto Suning's comp, and they are able to lock down on for that kill. It's another great moment from IG here in this game, number three. 4K gold lead at this point. Or if I could do math, I would say three and a half. Uh, with Dragon almost coming up. Bin has used Dominus. They want to kill Rookie. And Rookie, none to the wiser. About this play coming up. Lucas roaming down on the turret. Dominus will expire in a second. Max Fury there at the very least. As here we go. The Harrowed Path once again. SOFM wants that Heartbreaker on top of Rookie. He gets it, but he flashes away and has bought so much time. Rookie will go on down, but the Cavalry's here. SOFM to slow down Lucas while Angel and Bin have to get the hell out of there. But the Stormbringer makes it so. And Wink over the wall will help catch Bin. Shun is on the run, and this Toy Croc is about to meet his maker. Lucas will zone him out as well. And peekaboo, wink, waiting over the wall. You hit the keyword there, right? They rookie bought a lot of time. So sure, he goes down in the end, but he gave enough time for the rest of the members of IG to show up. And overall, it was an advantageous trade for them. A 5k gold lead for IG. So still a very, I'd say, damning position for Suning going forward. Lucky we are not even close to Soul Point on opposite side. Both teams only yeah. picking up one Drake so far. And IG just trying to do a good job of controlling bot side vision with Drake coming up in 50 seconds. I'll take the turret on top of that. Dragon, you mentioned 50 seconds. It just feels like that vision is going to spot out everywhere that SOFM goes. Uh, he's not down too much CS now. He's caught up, but... I think every time I mention, oh, this player's catching up or, or something's happening with Sooning, IG, another member, appears out of nowhere. The Prowler's Claw Varus is online. Something we've seen, you know, pretty recently in a lot of solo queue. I know we have seen this in competitive before, but it is just every fun game to of watch LCS considering... has been Prowler's Claw Varus, so, so pretty much the standard now, right? You, you still get all the strength of Lethality Varus, but also having at least some utility in that dash. Of course, it does have to be through an enemy, but minions do count, so, do you know, now. some yep. flexibility with that item, so, yep, gonna go pretty standard on that one. We also see more tank items coming out on IG's frontline, both Shun and uh, Nani picking up their second items, and again, the question I'm wondering is where does SOFM go? Because we already hit on the mythics you typically see on Viego. Again, his abilities do work pretty well with crit. You you love sustain, so that's why like Immortal Shield bow is a thing. <laughs> Divine Sunder is just absolutely broken right now, but with Stride Breaker, I assume he'll still follow the standard build of like potentially going uh, full tank, which is what we see a lot of Viegos do. If he gets out here, the corrupting uh, chains of corruption doesn't connect, excuse me. But here's the Harrowed Path once again, trying to buy his way out. Three members of IG did follow that, so for SOFM, should be okay to escape here. While well, Nanny has found himself a target onto Angel. Rookie's here with the culling as well. Bin has to start blocking some of this as the Gale falls into the wall. Almost kills him while they're diving mid-turret. The Solar Flare, Stormbringer, the Sun and Lightning take down on yet again. Yeah, Nani has been doing a great job of using the advantage she was able to get in the early game. Uh, nice picks by them. Rookie coming in on the flank, trying to control it. Uh, Nani going into this ultimate. Going to be another turret. Going to widen that gold lead even more. Going to get up to 6k now. 
and it makes you wonder if, you know, IG are like, hey, we don't want to wait two more Drakes to get Soul, and they're just going to keep controlling topside, maybe even just try to force a fight going into Baron. <laughs> I feel like we're still a, a bit off from that because we don't have ultimates up on, on certain members, like both Rookie and Nani don't have ultimates, but hey, you know, get back on the map, uh, clear your jungle camps, uh, clear the waves, keep controlling topside vision, just go into that, that Baron fight, w go into that Baron bait, when you have those cooldowns available, I definitely feel like it's a good option for IG. Makes it so easy is all the back of the top lane. Well, oh no, Angel was abandoned by Bin, but to be fair, maybe both of them died. Goodbye, Angel, and hey, do you have to control vision when you just get a pick? Nope, I, I was gonna not. say, you, you, you don't even need to bait Baron when you're just able to easily walk <laughs> back do mid it. after you just left mid and are able to find that pick, so this should be a free one for the side of IG. Sooning are gonna come and contest. SOFM does have Bolt, Flash, and Smite available, so certain things like that are always an option. But they're turning, they're turning. It's going to start with Lucas with the Solar Flare. SOFM uses the Stride Breaker to get out the Harrod Path once again. He Heartbreakers over the wall, but Shun on the chase. The Sun Turret helps out, but IG didn't take that much damage, and Ned, he's just still on the Baron. He's kept it aggroed, so IG can turn once again. And now, now no Flash, no Ultimate. Smite about to be up again, but I think SOFM's options are a lot more dire. Bin popping the Dominus, though, but it's too late. IG already get the Baron, and, you know, you highlighted SOFM having to blow Flash, having to use Ultimate. Sadly, your E, uh, your your W doesn't go over walls, so that one isn't really able to help you out in those scenarios, but yeah, IG doing a good job so far of they drafted winning lanes, they reinforced those lanes, they've consistently found picks, and it seems like Suiting have also kind of, uh, collapsed under the pressure yeah they have i mean it's an ig that have been a uh, pretty thorough in the past couple of games i think we have to give props to shun who started off this split or at least this series uh really nicely right shun and rookie both been star players in my eyes but uh lucas as well zero one and nine on this leona he's got locket but in both games i'd even say all three games lucas has been really spot on yeah, game one was a bit hit or miss, but again, it feels sure. like you can look a lot more at Wink for a lot of those issues. But, you know, even the drafts coming into this game, it's like, again, suit like you you have the Azir, you have things like the Viego, but I think overall out of the series, this is where drafts to me were most hit or miss. At least IGs does have more of a like theme of, again, strong early game. We can index through that. We can uh, get Shun really strong in this jungle roll. And now with this Baron, I think they should just be able to kind of plow through the base. They don't have too much siege. They do have those arrows coming out from Varus, so should be able to put some damage down. But you do have a bit of wave clear on the side of Sooning. The thing is, will IG dive? I do think they have potential with how strong Nani is. Well, the culling was started off. Remember, Stormbringer's there. Nani does bring down the Sky Splitter and on. Misses the engage. He's going to die immediately. Nani gets that Stormbringer. The turret is inactive. While the Solar Flare hits too. I was just highlighting this man, Lyric. And Lucas comes up with the Solar Flare that burns and turns. Invictus Gaming for Inhibitor. Number one, because the top one respawned. They want to try and end. Yeah, and I think they should be able to. They have a minion. They're, they're bringing the TP in as well. Nani's full HP has Flash as well. If he can find a good stun angle, that could even just be Huan Fong being, going down. And he takes no damage. Look at Rookie there as well. Here we go. Slide and glide, but the Emperor's Divide sends him away. Wink picking up the kill. The flash from Nani, who's stating himself on this Invictus Gaming roster. But there's low HP bars. The Heartbreaker in doesn't matter. It's only a broken heart for Sooning in this series after IG come in strong, get the first win of LPL Summer 2021. A lot of good signs for IG in the in the fact that Rookie is once again, at least from this series, right? One series, who knows? So Rookie's on point. Shun's looking good. I think, like you said, Lucas is... A big shout out to Who Will Dominate, who we all know is a, a part of the crew now. Uh, I also want to say that Rookie looks really phenomenal. I think Rookie's laning has been good. And sure, he was set up in favorable matchups. We talk about the Zoe versus the Twisted Fate. We, you know, we look at what we saw there with the Lucian versus Ear. But Rookie was always good at pushing the matchups to the limit and having one of the strongest laning phases out of any mid laner in the LPL. So I mean, just, I think we can just, praise Rookie for quite a bit. Just remember the way he played his Oriana, right? He plays his Oriana under enemy turret like 20 CS yeah. up. So, but this game, right? I, I really like how, how how Shun played it. He really took advantage of SOFM's uh, pathing in the early game. Again, even I made some mistakes on talking about like how, oh, maybe he'll go clear his blue side. But it's like, no, he didn't do that. 
gets the double scuttle. Does he maybe go too far forward? Yes, but again, Nainey probably could have potentially covered in that scenario. It would have worked out, but Shun pushed the topside matchup to its fullest. He got his own advantage and was really able to make do with that from the fact that he did have winning lanes. And then, yeah, it was just him performing well and Nainey doing quite a good job in a lot of these team fights and skirmishes because he wasn't scared, right? He was always willing to come in on the flank. He was always willing to engage. And that's what IG needed. I'm, I'm actually impressed that, you know, using the resources from Nanny there, he was able to succeed. It is it is easy, of course, when your team prioritizes you, but I think more so that Nanny was so controlled that he was so on page with the rest of Invictus Gaming. I, I want to say as well, the vibe looked really good there towards the end. I haven't seen Rookie smile like that for quite a while. He did look, you know, quite exhausted, quite burnt out towards the end of last split, so... Good vibes, good feeling there from Invictus Gaming. Uh, Shun is a jungler who, you know, despite people saying, no, nah, Shun's not good. Oh, Shun, you know, entered or whatever. It's like, sure, he had some back and forth games last split. But I think Shun has a lot of potential. And as a jungler, I think he can be up echelon if he plays like that consistently. I'll be honest. We have 17 teams. Maybe I'm forgetting someone off the top of my head. But Shun was the most promising jungle rookie we had last split. I, heck, he might have been the yeah. only jungle rookie for, again, for for all I know. But, uh, yeah, point is, Shun was solid. I think what's different this series compared to what we saw in spring was, again, I feel like him and Rookie were a bit more disconnected than, than, than they really should have been. To be fair, Ning, at least in, in recent years, like, you know, maybe going back to 2019 spring or 2018, he didn't play around Rookie much either. It was a lot more of, like... Rookie has his own advantages and impacts the map on his own, at least in 2020. So the fact that we now have like a Shun rookie dynamic, I think opens up a lot of different uh, avenues and paths for IG moving forward, influencing yeah. the map, kind of salvaging their bot lane if it needs, reinforcing their top lane, invading the enemy jungle. The, the, the sky's the limit, Hysterics. The sky's the limit. It is. Atta boy. Welcome to IG. Uh, now everyone's going to get their hopes up and we'll see what happens next matchup. But Hey, there's the damage graph for you. Pretty stock standard. It was a clean victory for Invictus Gaming. A 25-minute win when they were barreling down the inhibitor turret at 16 minutes in. So it is a, a very good look. Uh, and I think it was a really nice series to open us up, considering that we saw the strengths of Sooning in game number one. And then IG kind of rounded it out. Game two was a bit, you know, a little bit back and forth. But, uh, you know, IG single-handedly took that down as well. So I think there's a lot of discussion here for both these teams. These are... You know, potential playoff teams. I think a lot of people see Sooning as like, you know, in sum up, we should be looking at them as a playoff team for sure in top 10. And you, you'd probably be right. Invictus Gaming, people have skepticism. So two potential playoff teams going against each other is very good, you know, in terms of skill level, right? We, we get a good understanding to open us up. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think when you're talking about playoffs, you're also looking at the other rosters because it's like, you know, again, we'll eventually get to them when, when they play a series. But BLG, I think, are a team people are looking at that might come in and take a playoff spot that they didn't have last split. So it's like, okay, who's going to fall out of that one? But even with that, again, I think it's fair to say Sooning and IG are expected. But Hysterics, I feel like maybe we're bringing up the conversation of playoffs a few That's weeks too early, early, my friends. Week one, IG are going to Worlds. <laughs> we're in the <laughs> first right. three hours of the LPL. And, and we're you know, talking about... Were People take it out of context, right? Uh, Nady's MVP, by the way. Welcome to the LPL, son. It's good to have you. Uh, now, if anyone didn't realize, you know, the Shire is obviously having visa issues, but Nanny getting MVP is is definitely a nice touch considering we, we don't know how long we're going to see this top laner for. It could be a week. It could be a month. Could but be the whole the split, right? At least. It, it could be the whole split. But if we're getting play like this where Nanny's just like, come at me, bro. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, because that's the thing, right, is you never know of, like, I don't want to extrapolate on, like, what what's intended for this move, like, how long it's supposed to be, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but the thing is, right, if he comes in, if he starts performing well, if he starts improving week by week, even if the shy comes back, then that becomes a tough decision for IG, so, you know, yeah. I, I feel like for Nani, come in with a good attitude, perform week by week, again, solid game three, you had resources around you, but we saw he was using his teleport like we just saw on our screen, he was moving with his uh, extended lane to get vision to, you know, kind of use his pressure, and it's like, cool, keep doing things like that, and I feel like there's a lot of good signs for you, maybe, you know, on this split on IG, in the future in IG, or on other rosters, you know, who knows. That's right, I mean, he's got, the, he's on stage, he puts a good performance.